Hey, what's up everybody? Tall Toby here, and in today's SolidWorks Sheet Metal quick tip, we're gonna take a look at this geometry, particularly this area down here at the bottom with these flanges sticking out in a rectangular shape. So we can see here that on Alibaba.com, we've got a similar setup here, this round to rectangular duct reducer slash transition of air ventilation parts. And we can see that down here at the bottom, we've got these kind of tabs that are sticking out, this rectangular set of tabs that are sticking out. And the spec that we've got from our customer is that that shape should be a total of 160 by 120 on the part that we've designed for them. Our part is a little more rectangular than the part that we're seeing here. So 160 wide by 120 for that rectangular angular shape. The challenge is how do we create those tabs on a sheet metal lofted part like this? Now, this sheet metal lofted part started out looking something like this, and we actually showed this in an earlier video, and I'll include a link to that video, whoops, up there in the corner. So you can click on that link to that earlier video to get yourself to this point. But anybody who's ever created a sheet metal part like this knows that when you go into the edge flange command, the default behavior is that these flanges end up sticking off at a 90 degree angle relative to the face that the edge belongs to when you begin that edge flange. And so what I mean by that is if we look at this thing from a front view here, you can see that this is coming off here at a 90 degree angle. And clearly that's not what we want. We want these flanges to be nice and flat so that we can mount this thing to its corresponding component. But the question is, how do we get those flanges to actually come off at the correct angle? And the reason this is a challenge is because if I click on the top plane and then I click on this face here and I look down in the status bar, I can see that that angle is 81 84.81 degrees. If I click on the top plane and then click on this face here, 70.02 degrees. If I click on the top plane and then click on this face here, 74.74 degrees. And finally, if I click on the top plane and then click on this face here, I can see that I'm coming up with an angle of 79.7 uh, degrees. So all four of those faces have a different angle because if we look at this thing from the top view, we designed this thing so that the circle and the rectangle are not perfectly centered. So this becomes a real challenge because it's not like we have a dimension that we can reference for that angle, which makes it much more difficult to create equations. We'd have to create some kind of a layout sketch or a driven dimension, and then maybe we could use equations and we could define the angle of this flange to be relative to that dimension in the equation. The other challenge here is that, you know, we've got four different flanges here, and if we change the angle for one, we're going to have to, you know, we're going to see that it's going to change the angle for all four of them. So really, we would have to do this four different times, four different equations. We'd have to create a bunch of different references, and it just becomes a very time-consuming process. The other part of this challenge that we talked about at the start is that when we're looking down on this thing from the top, what we really want to end up with here is a rectangle that has dimensions 160 by 120 looking down from the top. And so that's going to be a challenge as well, because that means that for each of our flanges, we need to make sure that they are extending out to the correct length. Now, certainly we can define that in each of our flanges, but it's going to be a little bit more difficult to define that rectangular shape to be exactly 160 by 120. For example, I can input a dimension here, like I want this to be, say, 15 millimeters coming off of the edge, but that doesn't guarantee that the distance across is going to be 160, and it also doesn't guarantee that it's going to update correctly if the geometry of the original loft changes. And that's always the challenge that we're running into. We always want to make sure that if we change the geometry of the original loft, that those angles are going to remain flat and that that distance is going to remain 120 by 160. So what I'm going to show you here is a really cool kind of a top secret sheet metal pro trick. And the way that we can do this is by starting out with a layout sketch looking down from the top. But the really cool thing about this trick is that it doesn't just apply to lofted bends. It applies to any situation where you've got kind of oddball angles on your sheet metal part, and you want to create some kind of a consistency around the edges that are going around the top. So maybe if you had like a vertical conveyor feed that had tapered edges on the side, and then you wanted those flanges at the top to all be flat, you can use this same trick. It's a really, really useful trick. The other thing I want to remind you of is that if you like these kinds of sheet metal tricks and you want to learn more about the world of sheet metal, I do have a sheet metal training class coming up here in a couple of weeks. I'm going to be teaching it live via web meeting. So you get to spend three days with me or three half days with me. You get to ask questions to a SolidWorks expert and hopefully get all of your questions answered. If you're interested in that training class, take a look down in the description. And if you're watching this video a little bit later and you missed the live class, don't worry. We're also going to be posting this as an on-demand class. So take a look at the link down in the description. Description and you can sign up for that sheet metal training.
So let's start out here by creating this layout sketch. I'm going to get rid of this flange. So I'll just click on the flange and press delete. I'll go top plane, begin a sketch, orient my view. So I'm using control eight there. S key, I'm going to create a corner rectangle. And I'm going to say this is going to have the dimensions of 120, enter, 160, enter. Now, a little trick that you can use if you want to make sure that your geometry gets centered relative to existing geometry is just make a couple of construction lines and then make them equal. So for example, I could go here to center line, I could create a center line that comes off of the midpoint of this edge and comes up to, to here. Whoops, looks like I missed that midpoint a little bit. So the midpoint of this edge, and it comes up to, to that uh, rectangular edge there. And then I could create another center line here that goes from maybe this vertex here to that center or to that edge of the rectangle. So another center line there. And then I can take that center line, hold control, take that center line, let go of control and say, make equal. Boom. Now that 120 dimension is always going to be centered about those flanges. And so I'll do the same thing here on the sides. I'll do a center line here from midpoint up to coincident. You don't want that to be midpoint there because it might not be exactly horizontal. Looks like in this case it actually is. Uh, but uh, let's think. Does that math work? Yeah, I guess that math works, right? Because we made the other ones midpoint. I don't want to end up with an overdefined sketch. So I'm just going to take this point and manually make that coincident. And then uh, we'll do the same thing here on this side. So we'll go from the midpoint. Again, if the if the flange changes, if the loft changes, I don't want to end up with a sketch that blows up. So I'll go midpoint here, but I'll go coincident over here. That's kind of a, a pro level thinking. Uh, somebody who's got a lot of experience with sketches blowing up. And then what I'll do is I'll take this line here, hold control, take this line here, let go of control and make those equal as well. And boom, there is our layout sketch. The thing that makes this sheet metal trick a pro move is this is actually not enough. You have to take this layout sketch and turn it into a surface in order to get the maximum capability from this function. Now, let me show you what I mean. I'm gonna go into the uh, edge flange command. So I'm gonna go here to edge flange. I'm gonna click on this flange here and I'm gonna say, I want this to come up to this, this edge right here or this vertex right here. So how do I do that? I go over here to flange length, flange length. And then when I go over to flange length, I change this from blind to up to vertex. So it changes from blind to up to vertex. And then I click on this point here and look, I can't pick it. I can't pick that point. Changes to up to vertex. You can't pick a, a sketch point to use as a vertex. So this is really what makes this a pro move. So I'm going to cancel out of this edge flange here. I'm going to go back to that sketch. So I'll just click on the sketch here in the tree. And then I'm going to go to the command insert surface planar insert surface planar and when you launch this command with that sketch selected insert surface planar you'll see a preview show up on the screen and basically we're just going to take that sketch and we're going to fill it in with a planar surface so we hit the green check mark and boom there's a planar surface in the tree even if you're not an expert in working with surfaces you know hopefully you can sketch a rectangle and then launch that command insert surface planar so now that we've got that planar surface in place, now we're gonna repeat those same steps we did a moment ago. We're gonna go edge flange. We're gonna pick this edge here. Sometimes what I'll do is I'll just click in the background to kind of get the preview to update. And then we're gonna come down here to where it says flange length and we're gonna say up to vertex. And now we're gonna pick on this vertex right here. So flange length is gonna be up to vertex, flange length up to vertex. And we're gonna pick on this vertex right here. Click on that vertex and look at that. Now we've got a nice up to vertex end condition for that flange. And now that flange is coming right up to that, in this case, 120 dimension in that direction. In fact, I can pick that flange and I can pick this edge here. So here where it says flange parameters up at the top, flange parameters. I can also pick that second edge where that split is. Now these are the only two that are going at the same angle and are going up to that vertex. So I can only get these two. And then for the next one, I'll just get this one and I'll get this one and this one. See, I can't get this one right now, uh, but I can get both of those on the front for this first part of the example. So that takes care of our length going up to vertex. Whoops, that vertex got unselected. Up to vertex there. The other challenge that we have is the angle of this flange because currently what's happening with the angle of that flange, we're getting perpendicular to that sidewall, which is kind of going up on a slant there. So instead, what we're going to do is we're going to change that to angle. So here's the angle here. You can see you can change the angle of this flange angle you can change the angle of the flange well what we can do is click in this box here and then we can left click on this face of the planar surface and we can say parallel to face 
And so now you see we're getting exactly the desired results. There it is, parallel to face. And uh, then what we can do is we can go down here into this box and we can make sure that we're using this flange position here, bend to the outside. Now, of course, you could use any of those selections, but if you're following along with what I'm doing in this demo, you're gonna wanna use this third option here. And so now we hit the green check mark and boom, there is that flange. It's going right up to our 120 dimension and it's parallel to that planar surface. So now let's just repeat that for the other three flanges. So we'll pick on this edge here. One little pro trick that I use is I put my edge flange right in the S key menu. So I just press S, launch the edge flange command. This is gonna come up to vertex. You can actually click the vertex right here while you're beginning the command. And then look, it changes that to up to vertex. Boom, just what we wanted. And so now the only thing we have to do is pick here in this box and then pick this surface, this planar surface, and you can right mouse button to finish. Right mouse button is the same as hitting the green check mark here. Boom, done with that one. Roll over here to this edge, pick the edge. S key, edge flange, pick this vertex. Come up here into this box, pick this planar surface here, right mouse button to finish that. Roll this around, one last one here. We're gonna pick this edge, S key, edge flange, pick this vertex and click in this box and say this planar face here. And boom, we are done with that sheet metal part. If the uh, loft were to change, that angle would remain flat. And then when we're done with that surface, what we could do is we could go to the command insert features, delete slash keep body. And so we're going to say delete slash keep body. We'll click on that surface body. We'll hit the green check mark. And there we go. Now that surface body is no longer in the tree. And so we've got this nice sheet metal part that can be flattened. Here we see what it looks like in the flat. It's got those nice flanges there. You can, you know, once you've got this thing flattened, you can right mouse button on the face and you could say export to DXF DWG. It's a quick way to get a one-to-one -one DXF DWG. And then we can form that back up. And there we go. We've got those nice flat faces on the bottom. And of course, if we were to change the loft and this angle were to change, those faces are going to remain flat. They're going to remain parallel to that planar surface. And if the loft at the bottom was to get a little bit larger or a little bit smaller, well, we would still have these dimensions of 160 by 120 so we would be confident that this part could fit right into the corresponding part in the assembly. So I hope that you enjoyed that video. If you did, be sure to hit the like button. Be sure to subscribe to the channel. Leave me some comments down below. And if you're ready to take some formal sheet metal training to get the fundamentals of sheet metal down, be sure to click in the links below in the description and sign up for my upcoming SolidWorks sheet metal training class. And I will look forward to seeing all of you in the next video.